everyone this is ross in today's video i want to talk to you guys about the grapevines and we're going to do a little bit of a harvest down here at the end this guy is uh is fruiting for us and also talk about what kind of goes into this whole process of growing grapes in a backyard setting i think um at least for me here in a humid climate growing european table grapes which is what these guys are is quite difficult uh it's just too much humidity too much disease too many issues and you have to really you know put in the effort to have certain techniques right things like having better airflow um, also selecting the right planting site i think goes a long way somewhere where they're going to get the morning sun where these leaves are going to dry quickly they're going to be in sun pretty much all day you know if you're going to have this excess humidity you better believe that you're going to want to put them somewhere that's going to have that you know that drying of the leaves because inevitably what you're going to have is black spot or black rot on the leaves here and this is a really good example of the disease that i'm talking about and what will happen is it'll hit these leaves, the water, and if the disease is you know, on the leaf, it'll then jump and probably land on some of these grape clusters and will then ruin the grape cluster for the most part. I mean, you can't really tell, but this was a lot fuller. Uh, you know, these grape vines or these grape clusters on this particular vine were looking fantastic. They were looking very full, very healthy, and really not that long ago, they got hit once again with black rot. I had done a really nice job of getting these canes, these upward growing shoots off of the main cord in here, getting them, you know, upwards, getting better airflow. You know, at this point, I can't really change the planting site. The sun does rise over here in the morning, but for the most part, it just isn't enough. You know, we don't really have that sun all day here in this location. We just get too much rain. You know, additionally, I sprayed these trees this year, you know, at the beginning, when these new shoots coming out of the main cordon were about a six inches to 12 inches in length, I sprayed them with spectricide and munox. And this is a pretty serious spray. It's inorganic. Um, I don't want to use it lightly, but I was told if I used that, black rot would be completely eliminated and it seemed to work for a large portion of the season, but if I was more serious about the grapes, I think I would have paid more close attention to them at a certain point. Really got a lot of these, you know, arms up here and really thinned out these leaves. You can see the clusters here, which is getting actually hit by the sun right now, but there's a lot of leaves along here that I've taken off, really trying to get better airflow, better sunlight, to penetrate into these clusters. And I think this is honestly really key. I don't wanna give up on the spectricide of Munox, but I don't wanna keep using it if it's not really doing the job that it's, it's meant for. Um, this is my, which vine is this? This is my Himrod vine right here. And this is a green grape. And I wanna do a harvest, but I wanna talk about the other varieties just really quickly. It's, you know, at this point you can see it's coming off the vine pretty easily um, you know a good taste test is always recommended bite into that really sweet really juicy it's got nice grape flavor believe it or not it's got some honey in there some nectar that these grapes produce it's really strange but my interlocking and my himrod both seem to produce their own nectar their own honey it's very strange and in fact, what I'm going to do this year is I'm going to dry a lot of these grapes into raisins. And you can physically see, once the grape has dried up, you can see a yellow nectar that has dried um, as well as the, as the grape into a raisin. So, really interesting. This is also um, a slip skin. At least it feels like it when you bite into it. The pulp kind of bursts into your mouth. And then you're left with the skin, which in most cases is kind of has a different flavor, can be acidic, can be a little bit astringent, you know, have that really nice grape flavor to it. So personally, I love these grapes marginally better than the store. I mean, significantly better than store-bought grapes. They also make incredible 
raisins. And that's why I specifically picked him rod and interlocking down here at the end was so that I could have grapes for raisins. And you need a lot of clusters. You need a lot of grapes to really have a decent raisin harvest or to get many raisins. But in my opinion, I think it's worth, uh, it's worth it. Now in the middle here is my Mars grape. And this one has been the most vigorous. It actually took a while to get started, but you can see this is the only cluster at this point that's doing its thing. The entire vine last year had put out a ton of fruit especially for its age and its size and if i back up you can get a better view of just how huge this vine is it really goes i think even over here believe it or not in fact this young vine here is only really taking up this space whereas the mars is just pretty much enveloping most of the area and if i go on the other side of the fence it's even worse it's even crazier um, so certainly these vines are quite vigorous, right? We know that, but the point is with the, the Mars grape is that I think because it bared so heavily last year at really a younger age, you know, these vines are now in their fourth summer. Um, so in their third summer last year, it bared too much. And I think because it bared too much, we just have this biennial habit that's forming. It put out a ton of clusters, just like the, uh, the hemrod here but none of them really set. And I think it kind of rejected the whole idea. And this is the only grapes that I'm gonna get off of this particular vine this year. So again, it's a bit disappointing, but even this vine, which by the way, I've carefully selected these varieties to be disease resistant. I didn't try to find the tastiest grapes I could find. I tried to find the easiest grapes I could grow. And you can see even on this variety here, the Mars grape as well, it still has this rot on it, this disease. And, you know, especially up here at the top where the airflow is not as good and everything's kind of congested, you know, that's just one thing you got to worry about with these grapes. And I think if I had the most ideal scenario, if I was starting over again, I'd probably have a, a you know, a beefier trellis system something other than these T-posts probably, and I would put them away from the fence. I probably wouldn't grow them against a wall, at least here in this climate. You could get away with it in a drier climate, but we wanna have good airflow, not just on this side or coming through here, coming through here, but also from this side, you know, and you're not, you're just really not getting that. So I think that is a big part of the issue here is this fence. Um, it does look nice, I think, having them kind of in a way a spy aid against the fence. You know, they're not taking up too much space this way. They are super vigorous, but uh, I would also space them a bit differently. I think they're spaced at roughly eight feet or six to eight feet apart. I think that's uh, about right. This vine over here looks a bit further this way because of the way it's shaped, but I think this is about eight feet or six six to seven to eight feet somewhere in there and i would probably go 10 uh personally i'd probably go at least eight into 10 and uh you know get them the proper airflow that they need here in this climate alternatively if you you know this was a, a vineyard style thing you took this very seriously i guess you could grow them even closer smaller vines you know keep them smaller have better pruning techniques uh, but you'd have to spray them, you know, at least if you space them out a bit more, perhaps it could work out to your benefit. I'm not entirely sure, but also having the, uh, pretty much this two cordon system here of training them where you've got the main trunk that comes up and it splits off into two cordons, uh, and then come back to that every year, I think is a really good way of doing it. I think it's pretty simple to understand. It doesn't take a whole lot of time for these grapevines to kind of mature in this particular way um, to get the right structure. You know, if I bring you guys over here, you can better understand that pruning method, but you've got essentially the main cordons here and then off from the main cordon is this permanent thing here that I just keep coming back to. So inevitably what's gonna happen is that this green growth here is gonna harden up just like this green growth has. And I'll cut it back to maybe one or two buds. And you keep coming back to that every year. And every year the, 
these little systems, these little pruning branches here kind of develop further and get stronger and healthier. Well, actually they don't get as healthy, but you know, essentially you kind of get uh, a permanent structure this way. And I think it's a lot more easy to deal with and easier to understand. And um, you know, it's just a good way I think to do it in a backyard setting. So that's kind of the video here, guys. I wanted to give you guys this little update. I guess we'll try a couple more of these grapes and maybe I'll come at you guys because we are drying some of the, I guess some of these could probably use a little bit more time too, but I'm a bit worried about the, the birds. The nice thing about these grapes, by the way, they are green, but the issue I've seen with these grapes is that, uh, yeah, they're, they're not maybe the most perfect right now, but if you can get them actually to hang for a really long time, they'll actually turn super, super sweet and really honey-like on the inside and they become something real special. You know, I'm looking at this right now. There's probably some of these on here that still need a bit more time, but all in all, I'm afraid of more rot, afraid of the birds. And uh, yeah, we're gonna do a nice little harvest. So I wanna thank you guys here for watching this one. Hopefully you guys are interested in grapes, man. I know they're a bit difficult here, but maybe it'll be a, a less more difficult <laughs> or a bit less difficult in the future. We've learned some more things. We put more time into this. You know, once these grapevines start really putting out fruit, which I imagine is next year, I'll definitely put a lot more attention and care into them. As of right now, you know, it's kind of like I, I prune them, I make sure they're trained right. I you know, make sure that they're attached to the wires. I kind of thin out some of the leaves, but that's mostly it. You know, we do that one spray in the beginning of the season. Um, so yeah, we'll talk to you all soon. Take care everyone. See you for tomorrow's video.